Welcome to Squid School. The conceit here is that my teammates here are generally B rank, and I am an X rank competitive player, and so I'm trying to teach them That's a cool hat. stuff so that they can play league with me and we can get the highest power possible. Squid stuff. Squid Sometimes stuff. Sometimes stuff. So, Port Mackerel is one of the flattest, longest, stretched out stages in the game, which makes it the strongest Stingray map, especially for something like Rainmaker. Stingray is starting to fall out of favor with a lot of people. Reason being, Booyah Bomb is really good at shutting down pushes when you know where the objective is, like you would with Rainmaker or you would with Tower Control or to a lesser extent with Clam Blitz. If you put a Booyah Bomb on the tower in the last three seconds, there's no way that an enemy is going to be on it to trigger the overtime. It's just not going to happen. Whereas with Stingray, it's really hard to get away from, but you can dodge and avoid it. You can pop armor to make it take a lot more time to actually splat you. Take a look at the explosion radius, first of all, of the Rainmaker when I just popped it. Mm -hmm. It covers basically this entire middle area and will also do this to the sponges. These sponges are pretty nice because if this is fully inflated, half of this corridor is cover for me. I can just hide behind this sponge and it's really hard for Mikey to hit me while I'm in that position. And so if I splat this, you know, so that it's really small, now there's no cover coming into mid. You'll notice that everything is, there's kind of a, a grid, a tic-tac-toe board, if you will, on this map. And callouts can be a little bit complicated. I usually like to refer to left lane, mid lane, and right lane, referring to these columns that I'm swimming through right now. So I'm right now in our left lane. Here I'm in mid or the mid lane. And then over here I'm in the right lane. Now, from there, this is a really scary place for sharking weapons. If the other team has something like a roller or a sploosh or even something like a blaster to an extent, you have to be really, really careful peeking around corners. Another trick, if I put a bomb right on the edge right here, a suction bomb, you see how that hit behind the corner? The explosion mm. radius actually goes past the wall. I can be standing right here and be splatted by a suction bomb that's around the corner. And it's also pretty difficult to see from around the corner. Like from here, that's not something I'm always going to notice. So suction bombs and sharkers and all these things are really, really spooky. And if you paint in front of yourself and then come around the corner, you're announcing that you're there. So you've got to be very, very careful not to be pushing into space that might be controlled by those short range weapons when you're around the corner. It gets really scrappy in here and uh, something like a booyah bomb or missiles can really close down the space that the enemy team is able to use. I really like missiles for this map mode because same reason as uh, Stingray, you've got all of your targets right in front of you right here. I can see basically the entire enemy team if I get the right angle, even positioned this far back, not even necessarily all the way back from spawn. So missiles and Stingray are better on this map than anywhere else in the game. So for Rainmaker, let's talk about where you wanna push. One of the strongest ways to get points in this map mode is to go up this sponge and hop over. Because once you're over, until you're maybe hereabouts, there's no way that the enemy team can actually shoot you unless they're standing here already. They have to be, you know, ready for this push. And at that point, they've probably just shot your sponge already and made it so you can't get up here in the first place. Or they have to be standing maybe like right here. And even if they're standing right here, there's a wall you can use for cover while your teammates move over and deal with that. So once you get to this point and drop it down, you're in like the 25 to 30 point range. It, you're, you've made it very far into their base at that point. So that's a really strong push that you can make. And once you're up the sponge, which you can use for cover the whole way up, you're relatively safe going across the top. So the enemy team needs to be very careful about that push. But you'll also often see people trying to push through either the right or the left lane here. Um, <laughs> that... Throwing bombs at a Rainmaker that has recently popped is a very, very good strategy for keeping them off it for a while. Usually you don't want to be pushing through here because the Rainmaker has to peek around the corner if they want to fire through, and that takes time for them to set up. Whereas if, you, if you're going the right lane, they can kind of just 
be shooting down the, the line right away, and they have a straight line to the goal that they, you know, they just have to fire two shots as the Rainmaker, and they've made it all the way through. So usually you'll see the Rainmaker trying to go through the right side and not the left side. The other issue with going on the left side is that that area I showed you before, so you, from the sponge you jump up onto their plat, that's what that's called. The area where you can challenge that plat from that I showed you on the right hand side, that can fire on that side if you try and go through their left lane. So usually you want to be going through the right instead. So Starfish Rainmaker is a very quick moving map and we'll talk about why uh, when we can get into someone's base here. In Rainmaker, you're probably going to end up pushing down this ramp right here. This is called Choke, where I'm standing. It's less common that you push through the left-hand side, but it is still definitely a possibility that has some strong advantages to it. Look at where you, like, fire around a little bit from where you guys are standing and see what you guys can control here. Um, so you, you have a really hard time, uh, even as Mikey, someone with a brush that paints everywhere, hitting this corner that I'm shooting at right here. That corner is generally pretty safe. So if I want some quick points, I can drop in here from the left side and just use this ledge as cover and get myself, you know, the further along this I move, I go from about 40 to 30 just from making this line right here. The thing about this map mode that is terrifying for the defending team I'm about to blow up is the ramp that's right in front of me right there. Because if I get up to where Mikey's standing, I'm at a push to about 16. It's a very, very strong push that I get for moving a very short distance. So Pit is really a tremendous choke point on this map mode. You almost never see anyone trying anything else than just rushing it straight through there because of how powerful that is. But you do have one more option. So if you see me right here, I can make the jump across to this grate right here. And now all of a sudden I'm in their base with height advantage on everybody. At the very least, this is a very, very common flank route for a frontliner. They're probably going to come in and, you know, all of these powerful defensive positions right here for the enemy team to splat someone who's trying to come up, come up to that ramp. I have position on them from here. I can, you know, hold you guys back from trying to get out if I'm paying attention. This is one of the maps where you tend to see 20 second knockouts. If I get a significant advantage in mid, I can just kind of push through your base very, very quickly. Let's see how, how fast. I, so I started at 229 here. And I'm painting for myself, mind you. I don't have a team that's painting for me. But starting at 229, I can knock it out that fast if I have to paint for myself. If I don't have to paint for myself, you get a, a full wipe in mid and you can literally knock it out before they respawn. Extremely, extremely fast knockout there. Jumping over the side of the ramp is faster than trying to get all the way to the front of it and then swimming up it. So most of the time you're gonna try and approach the side of the ramp, use it for cover a little bit, and then hop over the side so that you can be on it more safely. Once you get onto the platform that has the goal, you're a lot more exposed. And like, you might as well just keep pushing because, you know, you are scoring and getting really, really low time remaining. So you're in good position and anything extra you get is gravy. But if you do think you have a shot to KO, there's a, a particular positioning that you want to take so that you can use the goal pedestal to protect yourself from enemy fire as you go for the KO. So I'll show you how I would do this. In pit right here, this is where you really need to defend. Um, if you can stop people from getting much further than I am right now, then you're in good shape. Because 45, that's a beatable push by a lot. But if I get around to about on the ramp here, now it's starting to get scary. If I get... First of all, if I'm on the ramp right here, instead of going all the way up, I want to just jump over this way. Because this gets me more points more quickly. You can see I went to 11 right here with like that single jump. So that was a lot of points, and you want to do that if you possibly can. You might get forced to be over here and using this for cover a little bit more so that someone who's around this left-hand side can't shoot me. But as soon as you possibly can, you want to be using the Rainmaker pedestal as a shield. So right now, it's really hard for you guys to come out of spawn and hit me. And from here, I have all the time I need to paint up the side and knock it out. There is one thing we really want to talk about with Gobi. The goal here is in a really awkward spot. Problem with this map mode, you can't throw a clam from here. You can't, you're not gonna be close enough. You need to be this far in 
to be able to get it in if you're going this route, which is pretty far. One other way you can get the ball in, which is a little bit more predictable, but might give you more cover, is to go this way and throw it from here. And then the other way you're likely to go is to go through here. But if you're going through here, you're probably not going to be carrying the power clan the whole way. They're probably going to be able to respond to that. And you either throw it up from over the top by climbing this wall, or you come around the corner and throw it from this direction. Um, whichever, you know, keep, keeps you the safest from the enemy team. Usually if you're doing that method, you're doing the thing where you juggle a clam. I've, I've taught you guys how to, like, juggle a clam when you have nine of them, right? Where you have nine, and then you throw one before you pick up the next one. Oops, well, I screwed it up. But you throw one so that uh, you're never actually making the power clam, and that lets you be stealthier. It never gives the team wall hacks on you. So getting your way through here can be difficult. Usually I like baller for clam blitz because it lets you get jumps to the basket. But you can't put a baller through this. There's just actually no way unless you triggered the baller on this side, which defeats the purpose because then you got in there safely. You might as well just run the clam in. So usually I prefer to go with something like Inkjet or something on this map instead because getting through there is just a pain in the butt otherwise. And there aren't other fast ways to make it to the basket. Is the Blob Lobber good? Uh, you see it occasionally in zones, um, but it's very niche. So the problem with it is that you really can't consistently get splats quickly because um, if you move side to side, the blobs miss you. It's very easy to see them coming at you. So if you just strafe, you know, left and right, perpendicular to their line of fire, you only get hit for like 30 or 60 damage and it's a relatively slow fire rate. They're really, really weak if you get on top of them unless they're in close quarters. But what they are very, very good at doing is painting and controlling space that they paint. So if you can get one like behind the zone and just have them slosh away and maybe use the one that has bomb rush so that you can cap thereafter it can be very powerful at holding zone as long as you can protect it well turf war is probably the closest mode to splat zones which is the place that uh blob lobber is going to be used the most turf war is generally not played in competitive play with one notable exception which is a tournament that we run turf be told <laughs> so debbie can tell you all about that uh, unless you're talking about the nintendo world championships you're basically never going to see turf war in a competitive setting. It's it's less often that you'll see a competitive player talk about its utility there, but it is pretty good in that mode. The thing with I got Turf the, War. Basket's wide open. Basket is wide open currently. Not anymore. We got him. Um, the issue with Turf War is just that what you do in the first two minutes and like some change doesn't even really impact the objective at all. I'm jumping sure. somewhere. Yeah, they, they jumped to our court. They should have taken the rail. If they had gotten over they the rail, tried. they might have been I able to score. Him. I shot him. Oh, got great one. job. Great job. Perfect. Uh, we're tied. Tied goes to us if they don't score one more. See, you'll see that it'll actually go up to 33 for them. So we're still in the lead. They're mid with the power clam. Not anymore. Don't let the sploosh in. He's going to splash down. Oh, no. They're in. They're in. They're in. They're in. Um, they haven't won yet. They need to score more clams, though. They're on it. Oh my god, is there someone else still here? Where's the nope. end zap? The end zap is in mid. Okay, we won. Oh my yes. lord. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, one in mid at least. One still Ooh, mid. That jump might be scary. That was in range oh, of god. their blue ink. Like, think how how far is their attack range? And if there's blue ink that is within that attack range of your jump position, don't do it. Up they right. got me with a blue yeah, eye in that game. Wow, they finished it with a power clam. They needed one single clam. They threw it with <laughs> threw a power clam in instead. Problem with me and my blob lobber is I sneak behind snipers and kill them along with the entire team. That shouldn't blob work. Not really good for that. That so. really that really shouldn't work. But it's crazy that you can get it to work. There um, are other weapons that are better for that. Oh, for sure. Because like you do have a relatively quick splat on a charger who's looking the wrong way with the blob lobber. Because um, if, if they, like, don't respond and move while they're getting hit, you can one-shot them. So that I can see being really nice. But as soon as that happens, the entire enemy team should be able to scramble and, and beat you. Um, so it should always just be a one-for-one -one trade in, the, in that situation. And getting there is risky. So generally, the, the higher level you get, the less that's going to start working. So it, it tends to be really scrappy. Um, there's a carbon roller fighting me over here, and I ran out of ink, so I'm just gonna inkjet him in the face. Oh, cool, I got another one. Um, so that's three down. 
We just need to take out this end zap, which I just did. So, is that a quad? There's a lot of clams Might have been a quad. Body. Darn it. I'm coming left, coming left. Carbon and Brush coming left. They're coming from behind. Our slick, our slick. Yeah, Blaster would be fantastic at shutting that down. Get the one on top. He's the scariest one because he's in position to score on the basket if they get a power clam. Okay, good job, good job. Way to collapse on that. We're good. Still coming. Got him. Good stop. They're, they're still two here. Be careful. There's a jump to mid. Got one. Uh, the other three are still there. Ah, shoot, shoot. They missed. <gasps> keep them out, keep them out, keep them out. Nice. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Miss. <laughs> And that is why we practice in recon mode before we go and try and play this. So we don't miss clams like that, and we know how far we have to be towards the basket to throw it. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. One going up right hoop. Yeah, Mikey we got him. Right good job, Mikey. That was a good response to that. This dynamo is out of ink. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't get him, though. Oh, right hoop again. Good job aggressing at the same time so that the uh, teammate couldn't collapse on me. You guys are doing a really good job of uh, defending that basket, though. Like, they overwhelmed us eventually, but you were getting a lot of good stops between the three of you when I was down. Oh, they got me. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and put bombs in the jail. Like, make it so that they can't be in there safely. Oh, man. I have a clam, a power clam, if someone can get in. They're pushing on right. I mean, left. My bad. I just did it, too. Got one. <laughs> Got another one. If we can make a push, I'm good. Got a third. You're gonna fall right from behind. You can jump to me now. Coming, coming, coming. The other one's not paying any attention to where we're coming from. I did it again. That time it was just me being bad. I cost us the game. <laughs> oh, crap. He's blown it. Uh, if I can just get in. Oh, I missed two? Oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's gonna happen. I it's jumped, gonna happen. I did everything, <laughs> and it just. Missed. Okay. Oh, what a legend! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> the buzzer here! <laughs> Every Miller gets Jeff, you. Jeff, we just needed to put you in a position to get the clip. Honestly, that was what it was. <laughs> we were throwing for content, that's what happened. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Squid School. I'm Coach Jeff, and then we are Bravest Esports. Please, by all means, follow us on Twitch. Also, I stream on Sundays under the tag of Stratagem, S-T-R-A-T-A underscore gem, and I stream Splatoon there. So if you want more of me, want to talk about Squid Game more, learn a little bit more, ask some more questions, that'd be a great place to do it. We'll see you next time. Peace out, everyone. Okay. Bye, Bye everyone.